but I think that I want to read it because I wanted you to understand and feel the sincerity of this, of this letter or this uh, whatever we got here statement. Today marks one of the most difficult decisions that I've ever made here at Michigan State. I'd first like to thank our fans, alumni, our administration, both past and present, and especially our current and past players and coaches for all their support, hard work, and dedication over these last 13 years. You have truly helped make my dreams come true. And I mean that in every sense of the word. Every, every February since 2007, I have reset this program in preparation for, for the next year's challenges. After much reflection, discussion, and prayer with my family, I feel that now is the time for change as we enter into a new decade of Michigan State football. I told our players on many occasions that Michigan State is bigger than any one person. It's the program that's so important. Someday there will be someone else here talking to you from this podium. That day has come. There have been so many amazing life moments in the past uh, 13 years. When I reflect, I think of our Big Ten Championship games, our Big Ten Championships three, the big games that we played in, the playoffs, the bowl games, the bowl wins, the moments, the milestones, the graduates, and the many NFL opportunities our guys have had, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, the relationships made. This job has always been a 24-7, 365-day-a-week, a year position. There's no downtime in it, not any whatsoever, and it is filled with the demands and challenges of managing games, players, coaches, recruits, donors, staff, media, an enthusiastic fan base, and competition at the very highest level. I will miss all of it, but feel the sacrifices that I have made away from my family must now become my priority at this time in my life. My plan is to stay on within the university and athletic department in a role involving special projects, especially transitioning our players, both current and incoming, to their next challenges. It has truly been an honor and a privilege to serve as the head coach at Michigan Fo State Football. Um, truly still humbled by that aspect. I will forever be a Spartan. And I want to thank everybody at Michigan State for all that they have done for the D'Antonio family. Um, so I'll take a couple questions and uh, get out of your way. <clears throat> Mark, from the time that you told everyone you would be back next year and you were looking forward to the challenge, what changed and when, you, when did you know that this was the time? You know, I really... Um, it's hard to say that because I work in segments of my life. I always put it, I put it into uh, different periods. You have spring ball, you have spring recruiting, you have summer camps, you have summer, you have vacation time, very little of it. Um, you have August camp, um, you have the fall, you have the out of season, the out of uh, conference games, you have conference games, you have uh, fall recruiting, you have uh, bowl game, you get a week at Christmas, then you go back into, uh, you know, recruiting for the winter, and you get on in on juniors and things of that nature. And I think the biggest thing that I started to feel as I started to go into schools, even last week. I mean, you know, I've always been taught by both my mother and my father that to try and finish the job and do the job, and so that's what I've concentrated on doing. I've just do the job. Um, but as I've gone into those schools in the last week or two weeks, these last two weeks of uh, contact period, as I would walk in there, I would find myself saying, there's going to be a gap. There's going to be a gap um, created if I don't stay, if I leave after next season, there's going to be a gap in recruiting. And the best time I felt like to step away was at the reset time. When you reset your football team, when you get ready for spring ball, when you critique what you've done, all the different aspects of that, I just felt like you know, this was a decision that had been weighing on me probably for, you know, I don't think it's any any big secret, probably for quite a while. You know, going to be 64 years old. Um, and it's something I've thought about. And, uh, you know, uh, after discussion with my wife and uh, want to spend more time at home with, with Becky and, my, and being able to see my girls with, who are no longer in town, it's time to have a, have a change, move into another area of my life.
Marcus, uh, I guess, how would you define your legacy from this point? We asked you that question in August. Um, how would you define your legacy at this moment? I think that my legacy, as defined by me, will not be about the wins and losses, although there's a lot of them. It'll be about the relationships I've made with my players. Very emotional day today. Um, when I told our, our, our football team, and it was obviously very sudden, but I felt, felt like that was what was needed. That was the first place I needed to go to tell the people what was going on, my football team. And uh, our coaches were in there at the same time, so they found out as well. Uh, I've shared this information with our, with our administration, and we've had talks a little bit about that over the past couple weeks, just which direction to go how to go about it, if I wanted to do it, if I didn't want to do it, you know, that kind of thing. But I hope that uh, it's not about the wins and losses, it's about the people and how I've treated people and uh, the relationships that I've formed with my players that I believe will last a lifetime. Jim Comperoni, SpartanMag.com. Mark, was there every t any time this year when it stopped becoming enjoyable for you? And was that, was that part of it? Yeah. That? Yeah. In what ways? Well, my, my joy is with our players. My joy is coaching football. My joy is sitting in a film room watching film and talking about football. And I still have a passion for that. But the things that you come across your desk, the things, the overwhelming responsibility for people day in and day out, just feel sometimes like an avalanche, to be quite honest, or a big wave. I, I would say not an avalanche, a wave, that you're always surfing that wave. And I, I just felt like like uh, at, at points in time throughout the season, you're just like, what else? What else? What else is there? Not in a bad way. It might be a young man having problem at home. It might be something that they're struggling with being away from home. It might be something that they're struggling with on the football field uh, or in the classroom um, or any any sort of thing, any, any of the sort of things. But when you're in you're involved with 120 players, there's a lot of things that come across your desk. And there's so many different things that you can't control. And some of those things you can't control um, come across your desk as well. So it's the things like that I thought, I feel like that uh, it just, I just found myself never having a ch an opportunity to come up for air. And uh, that can wear on you. And now, you know, recruiting has taken almost a year long process. It's changing where, uh, the most important times, I think, of, of your recruiting period may be June, your three weekends in June, your four, three or four weekends in June that you may have. So all those things entered into that, and as I thought, and I, and I, and I tried to think about the things that I was trying to accomplish, and I was thinking about the things that I was going to have to take steps towards, um, it just becomes complicated. And uh, at this point in time, I want to uncomplicate my life, to be quite honest with you. And... You know, I will miss our coaches. I will miss our players. I was very emotional today. Um, but at the same time, I care very, very much about this football program. And as my wife has said many times, this is my baby. Um, this is what I've cultivated and what I've grown. And if I look at our football program and say, what has to happen for, happen for it? Someone has to take control of our football program that has a three-year, at least a three-year vision. I can't keep saying this when, I, when somebody asks me, I'm living in the present. I'm coaching in the present. I'll know when I, when I know. I have to look down the field. I have to look three years into the future and say, okay, what's, what are we going to be like with a new facility? What's going to happen here? How's that guy going to enter into, our, in, into playing? He's a 2022 guy. Um, I started doing the math, to quite, be quite honest with you, a 2021 guy. Um, here I'll be heading, I'll be 65 going to 66. And I just felt like I couldn't honor talk, those guys talking with those individuals and saying, hey, I'm going to be there for your time. And that's tough when you can't answer, when you can't say I'm going to be there for your time, I think it gets tough. I talked to every one of our incoming rookies or recruits um, today, and uh, it's tough talking to them. I think they all understand. I think they're all grateful for the opportunity to come to Michigan State. Um, but uh, we talked about it, and uh, my thought process is, again, to help them transition uh, into at, at Michigan State and be a part of their lives while they're here, uh, whether that's bumping into them in the weight room or on the field or um, 
in the academic center or over a training table. You know, I will still be able to be a part of their life, but, but maybe just won't have to deal with the 80 hours a week and all the time that that will involve. <clears throat> the lawsuit and the deposition and potential fallout from that? Zero. No relevance whatsoever. I was wondering if you could speak to the, the I guess, call it difficult timing, being February 4th in terms of finding yeah. your successor, and, and will you have any role whatsoever in, in helping? Are you kidding me? People will run to here. They'll crawl here. Michigan State will get an outstanding football coach that will care about young people. They have a great foundation coming back. Uh, this program has won a lot more than it's lost, uh, as indicated by 13 years of what has, been, what has happened here. Um, they're on the threshold of building new facilities. Um, there are so many things happening here. Uh, so someone who has an opportunity to come here, have a fresh start and a vision for three to five years. And my goal, and my, hopefully my goal for anybody who's choosing the coach, and uh, I may be involved a little bit, may not, but is that they hire somebody who will be here 13 or 14 years and win 114 plus games. My vision for this program is for this program to move forward in a big way. You can take a step back right now and you can recognize what this place has become in 13 years, where it's at and what it's become, and you can push that forward and elevate this program even further. And I believe that that can happen. Kind of just uh, mentioned it a little bit there, but but have you had a chance to, to during your time writing the letter and thinking about what you wanted to do to to look back at the, the good, the bad, the ugly of the, of this entire thing and and just do you feel you left Michigan State a better place than when you got here? Well, I think that's pretty safe to say, um, but uh, no, I, I really haven't looked back too much. I haven't had a chance. My job, I'm telling you, my job and all these coaches' jobs who operate at this level is 24/7. You play a game, you get a chance to watch it once, evaluate it, and you move on. You never take the opportunity to rewatch it and say, hey, I wonder what the Rose Bowl was like. I've never watched the Rose Bowl. I watched the Rose Bowl one time. You don't have a chance to do those type of things, to reflect. You have a chance to see your young people and reflect with them a little bit. And when guys come back, Kari Willis came back this week. Um, but you have very, very little time for yourself to be able to reflect on the things that you've been able to accomplish because you're always trying to move forward. And that's what we've tried to do here, and that's what I've tried to do, and I've tried to keep it like this. At Michigan State, if from the first day I walked in this place, I've said many, many times, if we can just go like this, go like this, you can be extremely successful. And I said that on the first day that I walked in here, and I'll say it on the last. Hey, Mark, to the end that you say you want your legacy to be how you treated people, what do you want the players, how do you want the players that you coached and the men whose lives that you helped mold to remember you? What is the most important lesson that you want them to take forward from Mark D'Antonio? I told him the truth, good or bad. I told him how it was and I was real with them. I was a uh, mentor to them will not say a father figure, have their fathers, but I was somebody there that helped them grow as people. And that uh, that's my goal. It's always been my goal as a coach, help people grow. In the midst of it all, you gotta win games, you gotta graduate players, you gotta make sure they stay out of trouble. Um, there's, nothing's foolproof, but I did my very best and I did them with their best interests in mind. Mark, you said that you admitted at points <clears throat> this season and it wasn't enjoyable anymore at times. No, I didn't say that. Well, I said there was a big wave always well, coming on me. I never felt like I didn't have time. It was always enjoyable. Yeah. I, I love walking in. There's many, many aspects of my, of my job that are extremely enjoyable. Um, standing on the sideline after a win is very enjoyable. After a loss, not so much. Um, but go ahead. I just meant you admitting that there were certain things coming at you that obviously were difficult. If you, with the chance of hindsight, uh, uh, would you go back and do things differently? Maybe, you know, step, have moved in a different direction with your life, maybe after the 17 season when you're coming off 10 wins and a rebound, or, or any times would you do anything differently? No, I don't think I would. 
I can't, I don't look at life like that. I look at life like I do the best I can. I try and move it forward. Um, but, uh, um, no, I don't look at it like that. And there was a big part of me, a large part of me, that was 50-50, what to do, how to do it. And in the end, if you're 50-50 on something, you need to be over here because this job demands 100%. It just does. And I think everybody out there who's coaching would agree to that. Um, so if you're 50-50 on it, hey, should I, should I not, that 50-50 starts to wear on you and you start to, it starts to become a little bit more of a reality. But again, in talking with my family, um, my girls, my wife, my brothers, you know, so at some point in time, you have to start reflecting on, okay, what else are you going to do for a living? You know, people ask me all the time, hey, coach, what do you like to do in your off time? I can't even give them an answer. I mean, I look at myself and say, what hobbies do I have? I'm a bad golfer, okay? Um, so I'm trying to become a better golfer, but it's just the way the job is, and I don't complain about it. I'm just saying it's the way the job is, and, and um, as you go forward, you, you figure it out. Well, I think that's something that's, that's for the courts, well, or not for the courts, really, but what would I say? I've tried very hard never to say anything negative about anybody. So I'll keep that, I'll keep that right where it's at. Now, that's one question. We're not talking about this here. This is a celebration. Well, in my opinion, the person should be someone who can c recruit this area of the country because that's where the majority of your recruits are going to come from. should be somebody who has a track record of uh, treating people correctly. They should know a little bit about our program um, or have been in this conference somewhat. Um, it should be somebody that, uh, that has been a good co coach and, um, and, you know, solid person. And there are a lot of different qualities. Are we good? Last thing I want to do is I want to thank our players again, all of our current players and our past players. Um, they've helped, helped make this uh, very, very special. I also want to thank our coaches and what they've done and all of our staff uh, for bringing me along with them and uh, making this a very, very special point uh, in my life. The last 13 years, the six years before when Nick Saban brought me here, here were special years. And I'll forever be a Spartan. And uh, I guess that's all I got now. Go green. Mark D'Antonio making his final remarks as the Michigan State head coach has decided to retire after 13 years in East Lansing, a school record 114 victories during that time. D'Antonio, however, saying he's not 100% in right now, and if you're 50-50, you simply can't do the job. D'Antonio did the job well enough to pass Duffy Doherty to become Michigan State's winningest head coach during the 2019 football season. As we welcome you back into our